Hey, are you a rapper, vocalist, or singer, and you're having trouble putting out music the way you want to because you're not having any control of the actual production of your music? It can be a really big issue when you have to buy beats, pay for studio time, and pay for mixing and mastering, when you have to be you know, dependent on somebody else's time, or if you don't have the budget to consistently do it. So what I wanna do is I wanna actually share with you the actual numbers behind the differences between outsourcing the production of your music and taking it upon yourself to produce your own music. Before we go into it, my name is Lizzie the Gifted. I've been doing music for around 11 years and I've been fully producing my own music coming up on five years now. So I play the piano, make my own beats, mix, master, engineer all of my stuff here at the studio. My life completely changed when I started fully producing my own music as well. And I wanna kinda of try to help other artists and musicians go through that same transformation. And I'm actually working on an album now called Views from the Sunset. It's gonna be between 10 to 12 songs and it's fully produced by me. So anyways, fully producing your own music is huge. Today, what I really, really, would really wanna get into is sharing with you the numbers in terms of the actual cost of everything. Before we get started on the actual numbers, what I wanna do is I wanna look here in the middle at the three agreements that we're gonna have. I want us to just be on the same page right now as I talk to you about this. Number one is actually owning the music. And what I mean by that is owning the rights to the music. So when you go on Beat Stars or Airbit and you purchase a beat, right? Um, there's rankings of like the rights to the beats. So you can get like a lease, which means you, you can buy the beat and use it, but you're not gonna be the only person who's using it. And I'm gonna sell this beat to other people and you don't get unlimited amounts of streams. Like usually there's like a cap of how many streams you get. So that's like leasing the beat. And then as well, you can, the next up I believe is like exclusive, meaning, okay, I'll sell you the beat. You're gonna be the last person who gets the beat. However, you don't get an unlimited amount of streams. That means that all the other people who bought the beat, by the way, like they still get to use it and keep the beat. You're just the last person I sell it to. And then the next up is like an unlimited rights, which means you can have as many streams as you want. Now, exclusive and unlimited are separate. If you want both where you're like, hey, you're gonna be the last person I sell this to and you will also get unlimited rights, meaning you can get as many streams, that's another tier up. It's more expensive. We'll get into the cost of that in a second. So. In my opinion, if you wanna be building a music career, you should own your music, right? Like, how are you gonna get a song to pop? Or how are you gonna be able to sell your albums if you don't even own the rights to the music you're selling, right? So, number one, we gotta own our music. Number two is control the time. When you go into studios and you start paying for mixing, mastering, you're on their time. Now, the studio time, at least, you book the time, you get in there, you get out, cool. But with mixing and mastering, when you're paying somebody, you, you can tell them, hey, I need this song done by this date. And, but then at that point, you might have to start negotiating with them. Like if they have other projects they're working on, they might, they might be like, hey, listen, like I'm currently working on an album for someone else or two albums for somebody else. I'll get your song done as fast as I can, but it might not get done for the next couple weeks or four weeks. So now your song, which you could mix yourself in three hours or four hours, is gonna take a month because this producer has to work on some other people's stuff. That's the reality of the game right? But you're not controlling time. So let's say that you want to start putting out music once a month, one song per month. You got to really stack up those songs ahead of time, like further um, than you would if you just control a uh, producer on music. Meaning like if you know, okay, the producer is going to take a super long time or the, I don't get to control the time of when these songs are done. I have to really think ahead and plan ahead, right? And then number three, frequency of output, right? So like I said, if you wanna be putting out a song a month, or if you wanna be putting out a song a week, or a song every two weeks, or something like that, or a song every six weeks, right? You don't really get to control the output because you have, you, I mean, you can, but again, you have to stack up the songs before they come out because, and you should do that anyway, even if you produce your own music, but because you don't control the output, because you don't control the time of when the songs get done, now you don't really get to control how often you get to put out music. So anyways, three agreements that we're trying to go to. Own the music, actual rights to it, control the amount of time it takes for the music to get finished, and frequency of output, meaning control how often we can put out songs. Okay, so now that we got those three agreements understood, let's move on to the actual cost of everything. Before we even get into the cost of outsourcing, there's obvious pros and cons to outsourcing. I'm gonna actually start with the pros. I'm not gonna write them down, I'm just gonna kinda say them, but the pros of outsourcing is 
one, you get to work with somebody who's ahead of you. So that means that right this second, if you're like, I'm just going to start producing my own music, you're not going to make a beat as good right now as somebody who's already been making beats for four or five years. Obvious, right? So there's, there's, there's pros to that, right? Um, again, same exact things with mixing, mastering, and studio time, right? We, we understand that like we're going to work with people who are ahead of us and have been doing this longer. So the quality they'll give us right now compared to what we give ourselves right now is going to be higher. Like they're going to have a higher quality. So that's a pro. After I share with you the cost of everything though, the cons are going to be very obvious. So let's talk first about beats. Okay. So when it comes to, we, again, these agreements, first one is owning the music. Okay. So that's going to go along with the beats thing. So if you go on BeatStars right now or Airbit, like these are sites you can buy stuff. I think SoundClick is still around too. If you want to get an exclusive unlimited rights beat, exclusive unlimited, right? I've looked at this and, and I'm just going to, I'm going to put a number, and this is based on me doing this for five years, me working with hundreds of other producers, talking to hundreds of other producers. And I used to buy beats myself before I was producing. So I think a really conservative number, very conservative would be 250 for an exclusive unlimited rights beat. So let's write that down. Very, very, very conservative number. If, and if you don't believe me on any of these, go on these websites and go check and see how much stuff costs. Now, mixing. If you don't know what mixing is, mixing is basically taking all the tracks, the tracks from the beat, the drums, the pianos, your vocals, and putting them all together and blending them. This, a lot of people would say is like, it's extremely important and can be a very difficult and tedious process. So mixing costs a lot. Some producers will charge you per hour for mixing. Some producers will charge you per project. When I do mixing for clients, I don't charge per hour. I charge per song. Now, what I personally charge for mixing is usually a hundred bucks per song. And that's on the super, super low end, like extremely low end. And if I'm working with an artist and they want to do 10 songs with me, I'll cut them a deal and say something like, you know, depending on how many songs it is, I'll be like, okay, we can do it for 75 or, you know, 85 a song instead. But again, it totally depends on the client and how many songs they're asking for. But to say a hundred dollars for mixing is like, again, extremely conservative, extremely. Now, and by the way, when it comes to mixing, like, I'm not mixing in a giant studio with a bunch of expensive equipment. I have everything I need here on my desktop and I can mix professionally. And I, and when I mix and master my songs and they go on Spotify, they stand exactly with all the other great songs that are on Spotify. So I'm mixing at a pro level, but I'm, I'm definitely not the best mixing and mastering person in the game for sure. I'm not the best. Um, you can't, you wouldn't be able to afford to pay for the best. Like these guys, like, I wouldn't even be able to name like Paul Palmer, like super extremely famous mixing people out there. Like you would never be able to pay for them. Like they're charging like 10 grand for mixing or something. So mixing can cost anything between 50 bucks to 10 grand a song. So the range is extremely crazy, but I think using the number 100 for mixing is like really, again, extremely conservative. I like using extremely conservative numbers. In fact, you could literally, like, I'm going to rant on this a little more. If you go talk to any pro producers out there, like, really talk to them and ask them, like, yo, how much does, like, mixing cost in general? This is not what it costs. It's, it's honestly a lot higher. But I'm going to leave this here because it's a super conservative number and it's going to drive my point home even more. Mastering, I charge 50. But, like, again, mastering is the same deal as mixing. Like, max, mastering is, you know, mastering is the process where you take that mix. And generally, when you hear a mix... The mix doesn't sound loud enough and it's not spread out enough and full enough to be in speakers, um, speakers, earbuds. It doesn't work around all sound systems. Mastering is getting your song to be loud enough and equally loud enough in surround sound speakers, a car, earbuds, laptop or desktop speakers, speakers at a concert, right? That's mastering. Extremely important. You could have a really, really great beat with great rapping and great singing and it's mixed really well, but if it's mastered really poorly, you're screwed and you're done. So again, mastering is really important. Um, if I write the number 50, I, I'm still super lowballing it, but I'm going to write, so I'm going to write a hundred again. I'm not writing extremely high numbers. I'm writing the conservative ones. Now for studio time, the reason I kind of put this at the bottom was because 
sometimes a lot of artists, like I don't know where you're at exactly, but a lot of artists have their own recording equipment at their house, so they don't need to pay for studio time. Um, and they'll have a DAW, like Logic Pro or FL, or maybe they have a free version of Pro Tools or Ableton Lite. I don't know who would want to record vocals on Ableton, but whatever. And let's say they don't have to pay for studio time, so I kind of put it at the bottom, but I'm gonna put it here um, because I think that it's important to know because a lot of artists don't have their own recording equipment. So, how much does studio time cost? Again, it's kind of around here. Like, So the only time I ever paid for studio time was when I was in college and um, I was working at a guy's professional studio and he was charging me only $35 an hour, which is super affordable, and he would require a two hour minimum. So if we're doing 35, two hour minimum, right, that's $70. Most studios are gonna charge at least 50 an hour and require a two hour minimum. So again, $50 an hour, two hour minimum, that's another 100 bucks just for two hours. Okay, so we've gotten our number done, right? This is, by the way, just for one song where we own the right. So let's do the math. The beat is 250, the mixing's 100, the mastering's 100, I can do this without a freaking calculator, come on. 250, 350, 450, $550. So I'm gonna write the total here at the top. So the total is about $500 plus to make one song at a professional level. Again, I'm gonna reiterate this again. This is a freaking bare minimum. Anybody who's watching this right now and you're a producer, you're, gonna, you're agreeing, like mixing, mastering, and studio time for 100 each, that's, if you, see, here's the problem. This is part of the problem. Rappers, I, and I, yeah, I'm calling out rappers, because a lot of rappers, super low barriers to entry. Rappers do not understand, I didn't understand when I was, I didn't understand, till like seven years into my career. Rappers don't understand that like if you get a mixing per and like like this is how it goes like a lot of rappers are fucking broke like that's just how the fuck it goes rappers literally are thinking like i don't even know what mixing is i don't know what mastering is right i know what studio time is but i don't know what mixing mastering is i don't know what it entails or the effort or the importance of it so oh like a hundred bucks bro like i'm on a budget like i can't afford that you don't understand and you're thinking a hundred dollars for one song is expensive that's the problem you don't fucking get it. $100 for mixing one song is not expensive. It's actually cheap, to be honest with you. It's extremely affordable. I can't emphasize that enough. I really can't. But for those of you who do understand that are producers, you're like, yeah, bro, like 500 bucks for one song is actually like fucking fair, like super fair deal. With all this, it's including studio time. Yeah. So, again, we talked about the pros and I just listed out the cons. What are the cons of this? You got 500 bucks? Do you have 500 bucks to spend? Now, let's say you do. Let's say you're like, yeah, bro, I work full time nine to five and I'm super willing to put the money into for my career. Cool. Where are you at with the marketing? Oh, that's right. You don't know how the fuck to market your music, huh? Okay. Well, guess what? You can market your music for free, but the amount of time that you're spending at your job, which is giving you the money for that 500, where are you gonna find the same time for marketing? Well, you know what, I got a lot of, I'm gonna put a 500 bucks into the promo. What's that mean? Well, you know, I'm gonna pay a PR agency or I'm gonna pay for some Spotify playlisting. Don't even fucking get me started because the whole marketing convo is a whole nother conversation. Let's say you spend 500 bucks on a song. I think everybody can agree that will not do shit for your song. It'll get you views for sure. And if you're spending a thousand bucks per month on music, you know, yeah, maybe it'll get you something. Maybe your Spotify will start to grow consistently. But I have a whole thing that I talk about when it comes to Spotify and like why I don't think it's important to be growing your Spotify and why you should grow your own email list. But like, if you don't understand that stuff, you don't have the time to learn that stuff because you're making, you're working a job to make this money, then it's it's not gonna make any sense. But do you get what I'm saying here? Like, I hope this is driving the point. 500 bucks for one song. Now let's do it again. If you wanna produce 12 in a year, like if you wanna put out 12, right? I'm pretty sure it's gonna be like 500 times 12. Let's just do it. That's what I thought, six grand. So if you wanna put out 12 songs in a year, that's gonna cost you $6,000. Right? Plus another $6,000. I'm gonna write this down actually, I'm gonna erase the agreements, but I'm gonna write this down. 
plus another 6,000 for the promo because we're talking about 500 a month, right? So let's do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to erase these three agreements here. Okay. Total costs is what I'm going to write down. So one song, 500. Let's say, like, and it's so funny, like, I'm going to put promo 500, but I feel stupid putting that because I think we all know the traditional music marketing methods for 500 bucks won't get you shit. And in fact, $500 even with the really smart, innovative music marketing methods probably isn't going to get you that far either. But I'm going to use 500 again for conservative numbers strictly because I love using super conservative numbers because it just, if I can drive my point home with conservative numbers, then when you actually get the real numbers, you're going to be like, holy shit. So let's put one song, 500 and we're going to put another 500 for the promo. You have to do it for 12 months, right? Or no, that's a thousand a month. Yeah. So it's 12 K per year. Again, conservative, but let's just keep that number up there. 12 K. All right. I'm going to erase this and rewrite it. So let's talk about the self-producing. Okay. Actually, I'm going to put DIY, I'll put DIY, do it yourself. Okay. We're going to go with the cons first. Cons of DIY. It's going to take you a little, it might take you some time to actually learn how to produce your own music. It's going to, it might take you some time to learn how to make beats, mix and master. To get to the point where you're like at this level, which is like, okay, my songs are worth 500. I can now replace these. Probably couldn't take you that long. I'm actually about to start. If, if I don't know when you're watching this video, but I'm about to start a program where I actually teach people how to do this in 90 days. So you could probably learn this stuff in 90 days if you work with the right person like me. But if you're going to scour the internet and you're going to binge YouTube videos, it took me two years to get really good. Really good. Now I'm at the point where I'm about four or five years in and I'm making like great music that's fully produced, but it took me two to make like songs that you could categorize as between seven and eight out of 10. It took me two years. So it's good. It might take you two years if you don't work with a coach. Um, so anyway, and you might not have the patience. So it might take you two years. Again, if you work with a coach, it'll take you 90 days. Work with me, it'll be 90 days. We'll get you, we'll get you here in 90 days. But if you don't, you know, this is, I'm talking about the cons of DIY two years, um, might take some frustration. You might end up buying some equipment that you don't even know how to use. Again, this is if you don't work with a coach, just assuming you're not working with a coach, just to, again, conservative, but let's talk about the, and, and, and I'm going to put costs down here too and put costs here. So I'm going to write down all the costs of what it would take to replace studio time, mastering, mixing, and beats. Okay. First thing you need obviously is a fucking computer. Again, to be conservative, let's go ahead and assume you don't have a computer. Okay, so what are the computers? Let's say they're 15 hundo, if you want to get a Mac. You need headphones, meaning you shouldn't, you should spend more than 50, but let's just use 50. Mic, see, I can, I can show you my mic actually. So um, I'll just kind of go quick, but this is, this is a, uh, what is this? Audio Technica, let's see if it'll zoom in here. Yeah, there we go, Audio Technica. Um, it is a P48 cardioid condenser mic. I sound smart, I'm not. I mean, I am, but not really. <laughs> um, I got that on Amazon for 100 bucks. And that's a, that's a solid microphone. You also need what's called an audio interface, which is the thing that goes, you're gonna go microphone, plug it into the audio interface, which will then plug into the computer. So I'm just gonna put audio interface. Again, I got that on Amazon, 150. You know, you need like mic stand, cables, like stand, cables, stuff like that, like mic stand, cables, that's going to cost, cables are like 10, mic stands, like, so let's just say 40 bucks, like super cheap, and then, and we're not even talking about treating your room, like paying to treat your room, like you need, that's the thing, you really need to pay to treat your room, but if you don't have that kind of money, you can get this thing, this is a pretty cool thing here, so kind of break it down for you, but 
This is called an isolation barrier. So what you'll do here, so what you'll do is like you'll have your microphone on the mic stand and you'll put it like right here. Let me zoom in for you. You'll put it like right here and this kind of helps absorb the sound. It is not as good as fully treating the sound of your room. It's not. However, this costs like 80 bucks and treating your room can cost like a few hundred. So again, that isolation barrier, just go on Amazon recording isolation barrier. You can find one that looks just like it. Probably gonna cost you 80 to 100 bucks. Totally get that thing, by the way. Like if you don't have that, get it. That's 80 bucks. By the way, I forgot one thing here with the mic standing cables, this thing called a pop filter. I'm not gonna pick it up, but it's, a, it's, the, it's the circle thing that's like the phone, that's like another 20 or 10. But let's, so let's just say 50 for, I'm just gonna call it equipment. Yeah, equipment, about 50 bucks. Okay, am I missing anything? Oh, and you'll need some software, right? You do need like a DAW, digital audio workstation. If you have Logic, or if you have a Mac, Logic Pro is 200. I'm pr I don't know how much it costs for Fruity Loops, FL Studio, Pro Tools is 900, you can't really make beats on it. Ableton is really good, you get that too, but really not very good for recording vocals. Logic, and this is, I'm gonna put in here Logic. And again, FL Studio too, like you'll see a lot of producers make stuff on FL. And I'm pretty sure you can record vocals as well, but I've heard it's not as good. Logic is great, because it's great for making beats and it's great for recording vocals. It's really overall a very good software, I use it. If you have a Mac, get Logic. If you don't have a computer, get a Mac so you can get Logic, so it's 200. Okay, let's do some math here. I guarantee this number is going to be pretty high, but let's do the math anyways. Logic, to, well you need the Mac first, so 1500, oh, and you know what, I'm gonna add one more thing you need. This is still gonna drive my point home. The other thing you need, I'm gonna put like a little like, um, an external hard drive. That's like a flash drive, but like, it's like this. Like this thing. I think this is a one terabyte. You plug it into your computer and it can hold information. One terabyte's a lot. I would recommend a five terabyte. Dude, I don't even think they're, those are hella cheap. Like. Damn, I don't even know how much they are to be honest with you. Like, I think maybe a five terabyte is like $80, $80 or a hundred and five terabytes is super big. Like most likely for 1500 on a laptop, you're gonna get something that's a quarter of a terabyte, a quarter. So if you get a five terabyte, you've got, tw you've got 20 of your computers in this one little box. You can get it for like, it's like this size. Like look, it fits in my hand. It, and it can it can be 20 of your computers like that's of, of storage or of uh, yeah of storage so let's just say a hundred and by the way even though it's in a different color I I this is like to me get don't don't start making music till you have this get a hard drive get it for five terabytes run everything off that hard drive run logic run all your all your beats your logic sessions everything just put it all on the hard drive because if you keep your computer completely clear, you're, you're gonna be in good shape. Okay, Whew. let's do some math now. So, DAW, $200. External hard drive, 100. Laptop, 1500. Headphones, 50. Mic, 100. Audio interface, 150. Equipment, 50. And in fact, I'm gonna add one more thing. Isolation barrier is 80. Okay, I'm gonna add one more thing. I forgot a keyboard, a keyboard. Like the actual keyboard to play the notes. Get an MPC, a Kai MIDI keyboard for 100 bucks. So equipment's actually at 150. So to my total, I'm just gonna add another 100. Ha, Guess you're not gonna believe what the total number is. I'm gonna put it up here. Bro. That's, that's, now we're like, oh crap, I actually have, so that number is 2330. Okay, bro, like, let's keep it a thousand right now. I'm actually shocked, I've never really done this kind of a breakdown of it, but like, for less than $2,500, bro, less than 2,500, this is everything you need to get started. For less than 2,500, you can start fully producing your own music. Like, you might be like, well, I can do one song with promo for a thousand. That's cheaper. Well, it's like, yeah, but after three songs, only three, after three songs, you've already spent 
more money than what you could spend to just produce your own music. So, I don't have the three agreements written here. And by the way, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to add something else. Wow, this is incredible. This 2330, this is what happens after you spend this money. You spend the money, then you obviously have to learn the skills. Okay? But after you spend this money, where you're going, that's the last time you'll have to spend money on producing. Now, if you want to buy extra stuff, like once you get into producing, you'll want to buy stuff. You'll want to buy a new microphone. Maybe you want to upgrade your computer. Maybe you want to VST software, like different keyboard instruments and guitars and strings. And like, you know what I mean? Like you're going to want to buy extra stuff. But that stuff's not that expensive if you go to the right places. But like once you spend, and you know what? Let's just go ahead and fuck it. Let's just throw up here. Like, let's, I'm going to do three grand, three grand minus 23.30 really quick. I, I have three grand and I've only spent 23.30. What should I spend the rest of my money on? People would probably say treat your room, like music sound treat it. Go buy some VSTs. Go buy some extra VSTs. Like go buy Nexus, go get Omnisphere maybe. Omnisphere is 500. If you have Omnisphere, you're set. That's 500. Go get Nexus, go get stuff from Contact. Um, you know what I mean? But let's just say it's 3K. And now you've got a bunch of VSTs as well. Even then, even then, right? 3K, that's it. You're set for a hell of a long time with $3,000. You're set. If you have all this stuff for three grand, you will never have to pay for producing for the rest of your career, bro. You might be like, well, I don't have three grand. Then fucking save up and do it. Because you're like, well, I don't want to wait. I want to start pumping out music. I don't want to wait until I have my three grand. Dude, you can save up three grand and like, you can go get a credit card and literally go spend three grand and get all this shit and then pay it back. Or you can be at your job or whatever. I mean, you figure it out. I'm not your fucking financial advisor. For three grand, you're spending a quarter of what you would spend in a year. And after this year where you're like outsourcing, after this 12 grand, you still need to put out more music. You got to go spend another 12 grand. Again, conservative. Conservative. Remember we talked about that? How spending 500 bucks for a pro song is conservative. How spending 500 bucks on promo is like, who the fuck would even, that's nothing. That's nothing. That's not even a drop in the bucket. I'm using conservative numbers. These are conservative numbers. I don't think I need to go further. But realistically, if you're spending 24,000 a year, because you're spending an actual thousand for a song, because that's like pro, and you're spending another thousand on promo, which again is not jack shit. It's not even a drop in the bucket. We didn't even talk about music videos, by the way. We didn't even talk about filming videos. This 12 grand, you're like, probably, I, you should look at this 12 grand and you should be like, that's not even the number. 12 grand is not the number. This is a fucking baby play number that I use for my little whiteboard presentation. This is the realistic number to start producing, 3K. This is realistic. If you want to go ahead and spend 5K total on producing, like let's say you want to spend 5K, you get a better microphone, you get a bigger keyboard, you get a better audio interface, you get a better computer, maybe you spend 2,500 on a computer. Like, let's just do that. Like, let's go ahead and say you spent, like, instead of 1,500, you spent 2,500. So let's just add another grand. So now you spent four grand on producing. Well, guess what? That's still, that's a third. And again, conservative number. Let's say you bought a, like, an audio interface for, 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 for more. I mean, I mean, just we could just keep going up. If you spent five grand on your recording, you're still, you're still in the money. So this is where I'm at with it. If you're a rapper, vocalist, or singer, or whatever, and you're not fully producing your own music, I'm telling you right now, you're fucking up. And I'm like putting, I'm putting my flag in the sand, I'm putting it in the dirt and I'm leaving it there and I'm saying no. Like I'm drawing the line right now. No. No. No, no. No, no, no. Fucking no. 
No. No more. No fucking more paying producers. I'm telling you. I'm fucking telling you. This isn't as hard as I made it look. It looks expensive. The learning part of it, we didn't get into that today. But the learning, we feel, shit, that's expensive. I don't, or, that's going to take a long time, bro. It, you told me it was going to take, it took you two years. Yeah, but that was two years with no mentor. Not, not really any guidance. One of my best friends, Corey, really helped me a lot. And I didn't leverage him enough. Because I didn't want to fucking bother the shit out of him making him one-on-one -on -one mentor me but like I went on YouTube that's what you're gonna do you're gonna go on YouTube you're gonna try and figure some shit out on your own it's gonna take you two years maybe three years by the way this is what it took me it took me two years to learn how to get really good at producing my own music that's including piano lessons I paid $25 I paid 100 bucks a month for two years still do by the way $100 a month for two years I spent four hours per day, Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturdays, four hours a day. So that's 20 hours a week. Plus the piano, plus piano practice. All of that was probably five hours a day for like two years. Like I made that shit like my job. And so that's 20 hours a week times 104 weeks, right? This is a rough, that took me 2,000, over 2,000 hours, bro. You're probably thinking, damn, dude, how the fuck am I going to accomplish that? Hit me up. Click the link in the description. I actually am teaching people how to produce their own music in 90 days. Literally in 90 days. If you just fucking listen to me, get your shit together. You don't have to spend four grand on equipment, by the way. You don't need four grand. Like, I can, I can show you ways to get it for a lot less expensive. You might already have this shit. You might already have. Well, Lizzie, look, I already got a computer. I have logic. I have the shit I need. I don't have the keyboard yet. My room's not quite treated. But, like, I have some equipment. I'm recording at home. What should I do? I don't pay for studio time. I've begun mixing, and I don't know what mastering really is. I'm like, oh, I definitely don't make my own beats. You, you, you need to book a call with me. Because, like, if you're in that situation, I will take you to fully producing your own music at a professional level in 90 days. What it took me two years, easily I could get you there in 90 days. Book a call with me. Talk to me about it. Let's see if there's something I can do to help you out. If It's a free call. It's free. And if at the end of the call, you're like, yo, you're fucking lit. Lee, I want to actually learn from you. Then we'll figure out a way to work together. And if not, cool, I don't give a fuck. It's fine. I just want to try to help. All right? Listen, if you got any value out of this video, which I cannot imagine you'd watch this and not get any value out of it, like and subscribe and hit the bell notification because I put out a new video every week on Tuesdays and when I do, you'll get a, a notification right when I put it out. Obviously, throw a comment anywhere where you felt like this shit was valuable and uh, you know, hopefully we can work together, all right? So thank you so much for tuning in and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.